we were look, I'm pretty sure for like 10 p.m. Special came over uh, your your house and his supersonic airplane and it, it woke you up. You'd probably be complaining. If I had a friend named Special that had a supersonic airplane, <laughs> I wouldn't care what time he woke me up. Last Friday, the uh, NASA program unveiled, they didn't fly it, they just unveiled it, the X-59, which I've got a, a demonstration here. It is pretty much all, the, they just took a bunch of parts and put it together, and it's got F-414 GE-400 engine, provides desired combination of performance and reliability. We've seen that engine before. Yeah. A T tail to minimize the tail shock, block 25 F 16 landing gear, a T 38 canopy seat and crew escape systems. Oh, which boy. I'm wondering, well, <laughs> which T 38 is it the A or the new Martin Baker seats? S Skid would not approve of using the T 38 canopy. I just want to say <laughs> that. It's, he's op tested that thing at uh, really slow speeds. <laughs> it's, it's got external vision support system. So when you lose your canopy, you can still see through the external vision thing. And an extended note, I don't like that idea, by the way. I mean, as we've seen with the F-35, it's nice to have a backup when the things fail. Uh, extended nose with area shaping to reduce forward shock. A fixed canard provides nose up trim that you hope never fails. And this is supposed to be this new design. Um, I mean, is it quiet? We don't know yet. They, they just unveiled it. It's coming soon, the rollout and first flight of X-59. So they haven't flown it yet to know if it's quiet. It looks like a platypus. Yeah, I mean, they can say whatever. The first thing that time that thing goes to the sound barrier and blows out all the windows, it's going to be kind of funny. <laughs> Oops. Oh, <it'll> be that <laughs> Needs a flatter nose. Well, I mean, dude, they're doing all the, the testing. Yeah. You know, the computer generated stuff. It says it cruises at 55,000 feet with speeds of Mach 1.4 and it's 74 dec PLDB, whatever a PL decibel is, creates a sound about as loud as a door closing, car door closing. Who's closing the door? Because some people like to slam doors and some of us don't. <laughs> yeah, it's like Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> Is it is it First a car door morning. closing when I'm trying to sleep, or is it a car door closing, you know, just any other time? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what killed the whole. I mean, that's why the Concorde and the, you know, back in the 60s, the SST thing that Boeing was developing, that's what killed all that, the whole sonic boom. So if they can figure it out, it's going to be awesome. But well, that's what they're calling it. The son of Concorde moves closer to reality as NASA tests supersonic prototype. The quiet supersonic transport design aims to reduce the sonic boom that occurs as these aircraft move faster than the speed of sound with hopes to bring it down to a soft thump to allow for flights over land. Or, instead of spending all this money, we can just have people man up and stop complaining about everything. Fixed your problem. I, well, I don't know. Mover, look, I'm pretty sure if like 10 p.m., Special came over uh, your your house and his supersonic airplane, and it, it woke you up. You'd probably be complaining. If I had a friend named Special that had a supersonic airplane, <laughs> I wouldn't care what time he woke me up. I want to go fly the supersonic airplane. <laughs> yeah, I. I yeah. mean, isn't that what Boom is doing? Aren't they doing the same thing? I mean, I know they're doing the supersonic transport, but aren't they also trying to minimize the noise? Yeah. Yeah. How did so? Didn't the SR seventy one fly over the U.S.? Did it? I mean, it was at like eighty thousand feet, right? So is it subsonic it, though? Was it? No, dude. I think it was. I think I, they I were. I mean, at some point. I mean, can you go supersonic above sixty thousand? I think you're right. Yeah, because it's. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't have the FARs. Uh, <laughs> do what? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I, don't. I used to. <laughs> um, but I think above sixty thousand, you can over the continental United States. I don't know. That's a good. Question. I have to look it up. I have to look it up. Yeah, next uh, time I'm up there, I'll have to. <laughs> uh, it's a it's been set speed records across the country. So yeah, obviously it was because I remember I interviewed um, 
one of the pilots and he was talking about how they would leave the tanker and you know do the the climb profile to get out of the air because they had to get supersonic and then climb up and then they were above whatever I think at, what, were, at what altitude though does the sun I think it's like 80 not, like make it to the ground is that the <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah. know. That's a that's a good point. I mean, well, that then that's the other way they could fix it. Just make these things fly higher. I don't know. Yeah. Well, the problem is when Boeing loses that door at eighty thousand feet, oh, it's going to be a much bigger problem. It's going to be like an average going Mach ten. <laughs> well, according to the lore, it doesn't affect anything. <laughs> oh, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they're saying basically the comments are helping us out here. This so they flew all the time. You wouldn't hear at the altitude they were at. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and that's just common sense right there. I don't. We don't have that here. <laughs> special. <laughs> Welcome to the group. <laughs> oh, dude. We didn't ask you here to judge us special. We asked no, you to be one. I of wasn't. Us. That's we asked you to be one of us. That's the, that's the name of the, <laughs> the guy. The guy's name is Common Sense. <laughs> common Sense. <laughs> <laughs> special. It went right over. <laughs> I, I, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. Aaron says, although I think it's cool for testing, I'm not sure what a passenger or cargo design with the same capabilities would look like. A platypus. Yeah. If they don't call it that, then I think we're missing out. Yeah, but they don't know if that technology works. Works on paper. Well, or yeah, lots of CAD. things work on paper. You know. <laughs> Ryan says 30,000 feet. 30,000? Then what's, the, what what's I, the problem? That's, that's where they fly normal. That's what I got I Googled it and I got 30,000 feet too, but then I followed up and found it was Quora. So qualified. Uh, it's qualified <laughs> it's the same two Hornet guys that are always answering the questions. Yeah. We, uh, he's an A7 fun. guy. I think he's an A7 guy, man. Well, one of them was an A7 and a Hornet guy. Was it? No. But you know what I mean? I Retired fighter pilots that are just trash talking people on Quora. Especially, you're probably one of Do you answer questions on Quora? I've never even heard of it. <laughs> You're pretty sure <laughs> that's what somebody who answers questions on Quora would say if they didn't want people to know. <laughs> I don't even know what Quora is. Uh huh. I don't, do you, I don't know. You know, I, ha I have a life outside of the uh, interwebs. <laughs> oh, must be nice. <laughs> this is <laughs> real. This is all no, real stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> What's in my blue screen? <laughs> yeah, the green screen of death. Uh, oh, Quora's Jan Janner's back. Thank you. Says Quora says the sonic boom reaches the ground at 50k. I don't know. I so just, that's just ten thousand more than a normal airliner. Just bump up the altitude and. Then... But think about it, man. When we were doing like you know, red air out in the desert, there were you know you couldn't go supersonic unless you're in certain corridors. Um, yeah, that's because of all the communism. I if we know. get rid of a lot of that, that's true. It's the sound of freedom. Let's be honest. And Malt says ninety-one point eight. Oh God, we're getting into the CFRs. Oh, Seems to say each flight needs authorization. Sonic boom should not be measurable on the ground. No altitude mentioned. Hmm. First of there all, you go. there you go, Walt. Superpower coming through. Okay, dude, Can not in your, not in a platypus. <laughs> uh, old paint seventy one says the Kansas supersonic transport corridor. The area is seven hundred and seventy nautical miles long. He gives us the metrics for some reason between the cities <laughs> of Garden City and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Who goes to Pittsburgh? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did Pittsburgh lose? I don't know. Anybody know? Hmm. Oh, okay. They were losing when I uh, turned this this uh, podcast on. Uh, Old Paint says permission for flights above the speed of sound is limited to Mach three and at an altitude of thirty nine thousand feet. Okay. Really? Okay. Write that down, Donkey. Yeah, I no uh, Mach three was never an issue for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't no. even touch Mach two. What are you talking right. about? Right. <laughs>